Julia Usher recipes for a sweet life. We're still in the dog days of summer here in Missouri, so I thought it would be completely apropos to show you this very cool, pun intended, beach cabana cookie that's made with my recently released Dynamic Duo sets. It's a stenciled and airbrushed cookie, but in addition, I've got lots of little embellishments on top, much as I did with my recent bakery themed cookie. In this case though, all the embellishments are also made with the same stencil set that I'm about to show you. So let's talk about what we'll need to do this project. We're gonna be headed towards something like this, airbrushed and stenciled cookies with layered fondant and royal icing embellishments. But to get there, we need first a couple of already iced cookies. These are iced with royal icing, not with fondant. You could use either, but this is simply smoothly iced royal icing set so it's completely dry because we will be adding or applying, I should say, some pressure when we airbrush and stencil. You'll need my Beach Cabana Dynamic Duo sets. There are two of them. They'll come in a pack that looks something like this. The first is the background set, which is typically a six or seven piece set. I'll get into all the elements in it in a bit, but the most beautiful and eye-catching piece is the background part of the background set. Now this scene is somewhat inspired by my trips to Maine as a child and even as an adult, it's my home away from home, but the coastline there is spotted with all sorts of kind of rickety lobster shacks and boathouses, and so this is how the idea came about. The second set you'll need also is part of the Beach Cabana set, and it's the message and frame set that's designed to work with this set. You can also use it with other sets and mix and match. Likewise, you will need my quadrant masking tool, which I use to protect certain areas of the cookies as I airbrush so I don't get overspray into areas that I don't want. Then as we uh, stencil, we need some things to hold those stencils in place. I like to use the Stencil Genie, which is a stencil frame. The stencils slip in between these two magnetized pieces. Sometimes I'll additionally use tape to hold things down. Magnets, not because they're magnetized, but because they're heavy. I use them to hold some of the masking pieces in place. And other times I'll even use my trussing needle or turkey laser to hold stencils down if they're lifting despite having the frame around them. We will need a little bit of fondant for making some of the embellishments I'm about to show you, and also for lifting them a little bit off the cookie to give them more dimension. So this is nothing more than white rolled fondant. I am going to be using a little bit of raw sugar to create the effect of more sand on top of the cookie, which will be icing down. And then we'll be applying a bunch of different elements on top, and I'll be showing all of these in detail. But here are some flat fondant pieces, little surfboards. The messages are also done with flat fondant. Then we get into some more dimensional transfers. These are made with royal icing and then airbrushed and stenciled, the little beach balls. And then lastly, some contoured fondant beach umbrellas. And I'll be showing those all at the end of the video. In areas where the stencil colorings don't hit the stencil or where I want added colors, I often rely on compressed petal dust and a small brush to just give shadows of color. And so we may or may not be using these as we go along today, but if so, I'll show you how they work. And of course, for airbrushing and stenciling, you always need airbrush colors. You don't wanna use gel colorings because they'll clog your airbrush. So these are specially formulated for the airbrush. I'm working with seven today. You can make the process a lot faster and simpler by minimizing the colors, but this one really does well with a lot of colors distinct ones in the different areas of the background scene. And of course you'll need an airbrush system. I've got my Julia airbrush here, my compressor's on the ground, and that's what powers the airbrush. So that's what you need for the project. We're gonna start by looking at how the background set works in isolation without the message and frame set, and then we'll put the two together. Okay, so as I mentioned, we're gonna start with just the background Beach Cabana set and see how that works by itself. I'm gonna try to replicate this cookie here, which involves the background stencil and an overlay of the surfboards. Really, really simple. But first, let me show you what's in the background set. The beautiful background, as we talked about before, is the first piece. To leave room for any of the elements we put on top, like the surfboard, I've got a bunch of little masking pieces that we can tape down. There's one for the surfboard, there's one for oars, there's one for a little beach bag, and there's one for the beach umbrella as well. And those will leave little spaces so that you can come back later 
and apply the shading stencil if you'd like. This is just the negative piece that's left over after those masking pieces have been cut out. And sometimes I use this to create a shadow effect. For these very realistic elements, I probably won't use it because I want them to look very, very defined, but I often use the equivalent shading piece in my message set when I do the messages, and I'll show you that in a bit. And then the last element in the pack will be the actual stencils for those pieces that we blocked out. So the surfboards, umbrella, oars, and beach bag in this case. But we'll be just working with the surfboards on this particular example. Okay, the first step is to lay the background stencil on the cookie, ideally in a stencil genie or frame so the stencil lays completely flat. My stencil is lifting even so while I'm spraying near it, so I'm holding things down with my trussing needle as you can see, starting first with the sand color. Now I'm moving on to the grass. I am spraying at really tight range here because these colors are going down very close to each other, so I'm about one or two inches away. If I'm further away, I'll get overspray, for instance, of the green into the sand, and we don't want that. So when working at close range, you want to have limited coloring flow, though. You want to avoid pooling of color on top of the stencil and subsequent flooding underneath the stencil. Working with brown now here on the fence, I've masked off the beach hut so that I don't get brown into the center of the hut. Doing the same on the other side, using my quadrant masking tool to shield the hut, essentially. And as you can see, that worked really effectively. There's no coloring in that area. I'm gonna use black here at a distance to shade the clouds gray. And now I'm moving in tighter range to get the blue into these tight areas on the hut. I'm masking off now with the magnets, the central lifesaver, because I don't want to get red there and just going around the hut completely in red. I'm going to do a solid red here. I'll show a different shading technique a little bit later that's going to make the hut look more distressed or weathered, but we're going to keep it solid for now. And lastly, coming in with the blue and the lifesaver and in the flag at the top. And let's see what that looks like. Ta-da! It looks great, though you'll notice some voids in the sand in the front and also along the grass. I kind of got some color blending up at the top of the hut, but I don't think that looks too bad. So I'm going to mask off, though, that surfboard area again because I want to shade in and around the sand to fill in some of those voids. I'm going to be shading at a distance now. Some green color along the grass and some sand color along the sand and also behind the fence, so it appears as if the beach continues behind the fence. So that's what I'm doing here. And then also off to the right. And now we're ready to lay the surfboard stencil in the void that was left by the mask and go ahead and spray that. I'm just doing a solid blue and there she is. That looks great. I'm gonna come back in later and potentially add some dimensional elements to it. Certainly a border, maybe a little bit of sand, but first I wanna show you how we'd use this same background set in tandem with a message and frame set to create a different kind of overlay effect. Okay, back, we're gonna work with the message and frame set now. I'm headed towards a cookie that's gonna look something like this with the exception of the fact that the message is gonna be directly applied to the cookie. We'll talk about these dimensional elements later. Let's talk first about what's in that message and frame set. As you saw in the intro, it consists of some pretty frames, but in order to get those on the cookie without the background interfering, you will need to mask off a space for them much the way we masked off the surfboards before. And this set has four different masks corresponding to the different frames, which you can see here. It's also got an equivalent shading piece, so I can create kind of a shadow effect around the messages. And again, this is just the negative piece that's left over after cutting out the mask. And then of course the messages. In this case, I've got four. So we've got a lot of different options here. So let's see how those all work together. So the first step is just as before to set the background stencil on the cookie in the stencil frame hitting with the same colors. The only difference here is I've laid a masking piece in the upper right to receive the message and frame later. Onto my green, now onto my brown, holding down with my trussing needle because things are kind of lifting, especially along those long stripes on the fence, and now masking off the hut again as before to avoid getting brown in it. Coming in close range, just as before with the blue, I'm gonna shield the sand down at the bottom so I don't get any blue in that. I got a little in it last time. And now I'm hitting the hut again completely with a red, but we'll come back with black a little bit later and distress it or shadow it, as I mentioned before. But let me get that blue in first. I'm going to hit the clouds again with a little black and now come in and hit the edges of the boards and some of the interiors of the boards with black. And that just creates a nice weathered look, as you can see. So we're ready to move on to shading 
the grass areas and the sand areas just as I did before to fill in some of those voids. Hitting the foreground sand now. And once that's done, we'll be able to remove the mask and lay in the message and frame. But first I like to put a little shadow of color around the message. This is completely optional, but I think it often looks good. So I'm gonna lay that shading stencil, mask off the pieces that I don't wanna get coloring in and then spray at a distance to create just a light hint of color. Now moving on to the frame, I'm spraying at much closer range now, but gradually because I don't wanna get the coloring pooling up on top of the stencil. If you spray too much, too close, too fast, the coloring can pool up and seep underneath, but that looks terrific. And the last step is to lay in the message. I think I'm gonna stick with brown here and again, spraying at close range, but applying the coloring rather gradually, holding down with my trussing needle. And there it is with the message directly applied to the cookie. I do wanna point out the difference in highlighting here. As I said, I distressed this one by shadowing with a little bit of black around the edges. And the first time I did not, and you can see the contrast here. This is very crisp and sharp and bright red. And this just has a little bit more variation in it. So the choice is yours. We're gonna move on now to some dimensional elements to put on top that use exactly these same stencil sets. Okay, for the fun part, which is all the dimensional stuff, I've got four, actually three types of elements to show you with a variation on the first. And they're all made with either rolled fondant or royal icing and the same stencil sets. So first we're gonna start with some flat elements which will be lifted off the cookie to add dimension like the surfboards, the oars, and the beach bags, which are made with fondant rolled thin and airbrushed. And a variation on that are the message and frame sets. We did them directly on the cookie in the last segment here. I like to make them separately often so that I can put them off the cookie, even hanging off the edge for more interest. Once the fondant sets, it'll be rigid and then they hold their shape quite nicely. Then we move on to an even bigger variation of those flat fondant pieces. And we're gonna do some curved ones for the beach umbrellas. You can see they've got a nice umbrella-like arc to them, which adds even more interest to the cookie. And then the last piece are little dimensional beach balls. These are actually made with piped royal icing transfers allowed to dry and then airbrushed and stenciled. So we're gonna start with the fondant pieces. The first step with all the fondant embellishments is to roll out the fondant. For that, I use my pasta machine. I take it through on the number one setting and then take it to the number three or number four setting, which takes it down to about 1 16th of an inch. I want these to be rather delicate pieces. Then cut them into more manageable sizes that we can stencil. I'm gonna show you how to do a surfboard. This is the first type of embellishment, which is a simple flat piece. So it's as simple as just laying the stencil on top, weighting it down and spraying as we did directly on the cookie. That looks great. And while the fondant's still pliable, I wanna trim it out using a sharp paring knife. We'll trim all the way around and then set it aside to dry. Typically in a few hours, it'll be firm enough that I can pick it up and put it on a cookie. And certainly if I dry it overnight, it'll be very, very rigid. Drying time is a function of the type of fondant and brand. So you'll have to experiment with that. I use satin ice. These oars were done the exact same way. You'll notice there's a little white part in the center of them. I do want to shade that so it looks like there's sand behind the oars. And to do that, I'm using those compressed petal dusts I talked about earlier. Dry brush on a dry piece of fondant with a dry dust just lends a very faint accent of color and that's really all I wanted. Now I'm gonna do a similar piece for a message plaque. Just stenciling as we did on the cookie using a slightly different frame and message here. And I often use these to put the messages down in such a way that they overlap other pieces. And again, you wanna trim out while the fondant's pliable. That'll be a little bit more easy to do than if it dries for any period of time. And you just trim it all the way around so it looks something like so. Now onto the next fondant embellishment. This is gonna be the umbrella. It starts out the same way, but we're gonna then give it some shape so it looks like it's actually curved. So I'm just gonna airbrush the top portion of the umbrella. I don't need to get the handle of it because we'll lay that onto the actual cookie. And now I'll trim out all the way around it. Starting first with my paring knife, I'm gonna use a pastry tip, I think, to cut out the scallop portion at the bottom. That'll make a much neater look. 
or a small cutter, either will do. Patting in the sides if they're at all rough. And now I want to shape it into a curve like so. And to do that, I take another blob of fondant and simply press it around it so that it hits the cardboard that I'm working on or the work surface. And that way it'll lay flush against the cookie when we come to do it. Now I want to move on to the royalizing transfers. For this, I use the beach ball part of the stencil to create a template by simply airbrushing it onto a piece of paper. And then I stuck that paper underneath a piece of acetate. So I'll be piping royal icing on top of the acetate, letting it dry, airbrushing it, and then removing the royal icing piece once it's completely dry. For this, I'm using a relatively loose icing, but I want it to have some body because I want those beach balls to be puffy. So it might form a slight peak, but it's one that'll settle into the mass of icing or can be gently tapped down and disappear. But that creates a nice rounded shape. And I would just do that all the way around, set those aside to dry. And when they're completely dry, we can airbrush them. So I'm going to bring in some dry pieces. Set down my beach ball stencil over it. Now, I was careful to pipe those balls slightly shy of the edge of the stencil. That way I can get airbrush coloring all the way around the beach ball. Hit it with two colors and there you have it. It's as easy as that. Okay, so we're ready to dress it all up with the embellishments we just made. This is the first cookie I did early on in the video and I just wanna give it a little dimensional lift. I think I'm gonna use these elements, attach the message here and then put the freshly airbrushed beach ball somewhere down at the base of the surfboards. But first, I wanna get a little sand on the beach. That would be the first thing I would do even before laying a border, because if I do the border first and the icing's wet, then my sand's gonna stick in my border and I don't want that to be the case. Okay, to stick down the sand, I don't like to use a very, very thick icing like my icing glue, because if it's too thick, the sugar will just bounce right off. So this has got a little looseness to it, but still some body, probably my outlining consistency. I've also tinted it a sand color so that if any should peek out behind the raw sugar, it's less likely to show. Just gonna brush off some stray sand and I'm now ready to apply the border. I'm keeping the border simple dots because there's so much jazziness to the pattern on the inside of the cookie, but taking care to choose a color that ties in well with the surfboards and other accent blue colors on the cookie. Now we're ready to add those dimensional elements we made in the last segment. For the message, I do want to lift it up off the cookie, so I've applied a little blob of fondant with royal icing to the cookie itself, and I'm sticking the message on that. And you'll see that just sits slightly above the cookie and adds more interest in my mind. The beach ball, however, I'm gonna put directly onto the cookie with a little bit of royal icing glue, just taking care not to put my finger on it because it may still be wet from airbrushing, but I think I can move it ever so carefully with the tip of my paintbrush. And then lastly, I wanna fill in the window. It looks rather white. I'd like it to look as if there's some light shining in there. So I'm moving on to that compressed petal dust we used earlier, taking a dry brush on a dry cookie and just rubbing that dust into it to create a light shadow of yellow. So that completes just one possibility using the background set and some dimensional elements. As a reminder, so many different ways these sets can work together. They're super versatile. Here's just the background set used on the cookie. No message, no frame, no dimensional elements. Here's one that just uses the background set, but lots of dimensional elements. I've got the cool little umbrella on this one, which I particularly love. And then lastly, one which combines pretty much everything. We've got the distressed quality on the hut here by shading with the black, as you recall. Also dimensional fondant, message, oars, and beach ball. This time the beach ball was done directly on fondant as well, so it's got a little less roundness to it, but still equally cute. So that completes this video. Just as a reminder, before I let you go, all of my stencils can be found on my partner's site, confectioncouturestencils.com, and that link can also be found in the video description. Till next video, live sweetly. Mm -hmm.